Lord is telling me. What made me an excellent to be a minister or a musician is that any time at all, there is a bank holiday. People go to the big and other people to entertain ourselves, be ourselves. Are you on? But when it comes to bank holiday, I leave my family. I put them in order. I leave them and go quietly and take a keyboard and go to the beach and then stay. I took a drum. I play African talking drum and all these things. So people did not know. But one day, the president of Ghana, I don't know whether you know Jerry Rollins, he's a white man. Yes, yeah. He's just a white man. Mm -hmm. And they are having a program. And they have a dance company. Registered dance company. Traditional dance company. And they were having a program. So I paid the instrumental, the drummer, who he used to do, every day. And the Lord spoke to me. He said to me, he said, no, you need to learn. He said, you need to learn. You don't have to depend on anybody. You need to depend on me. Amen. And he always will teach you. So you know what I do? I started learning the thing. And every drum, talking drum, is a language. Mm -hmm. So I have to make a research. And no, you know what happened? At the end of it all, there was a one day, the state program, all the men, Obasan Joe was there, the Nigerian president was there, and all that thing. And they, 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 they invited us to go. But there are some national companies that are being paid by the government who are higher than us. So what I do is that all the time what I was preaching, I was uh, learning, not knowing it's good for me. Did you know that I paid the drummer, the drummer didn't stand up. And this is the next step program. Other than that, we are going to be disqualified. The government has the right to discipline or sue us or put the leader in jail. But you know what I mean? Because of what I'm learning, I keep it. Then that day, all everybody was there. But we don't have a drummer. So I have to come from uni and run very fast, all the way from uh, North Village and come there. When I read there, the drama was strong. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Like, what Eric is going to preach, who is going to teach over mm here. -hmm. And he's the person everyone was expecting. And then I came there and I said, let's go. Whatever I will do, just follow. Mm -hmm. So when we read there, they announced that the time has come, we need to perform. So I know one or two things. I said, let's start with the one that I know. Okay. Did you know that that day, the, the pastor, the talking language that I pray on the drum, um, yeah. I don't know how to now. Oh. Holy Spirit can work. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And it was wonderful. Since that day, I became better than the drummer. Oh, like Amen. Hallelujah. I never spent money on any time at all. So I want you to understand that when you go and the people are not here, those who are ready, go with them. Go with them. Because if one person, because of your teaching, your preaching, your singing, can transform the person, it's better than thousands of people who are not receiving the healing. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord take his course in the name of Jesus. Because I can see the growth of the church. Amen. I see it hard food on the church. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Christ. Amen. That we put our hands together to welcome our man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. All the time. I'm just going to move this uh, rostrum. Just give me one minute. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, I give all the honor, all of the praise, all of the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 verses 18 says that Jesus Christ, he's the head of the body, the church. 
He is, the, he is the beginning, he is the firstborn from the dead, and in all things he has the preeminence. Mm -hmm. So I give the preeminence to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And this morning I'm ministering on the kingdom of God. Um, I'm hoping, in fact, I give also the platform to the Holy Ghost. He is my teacher. I stand before him humbly and right now I ask the Holy Spirit, in fact, I, he does not need my permission to come and take over, take control of my tongue, take control of my mind, everything that I say and do. May he have all the praise, all the honor, all the glory and all the people said, Amen. 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 Remember, I'm ministering on the kingdom of God and by now you should have an understanding of the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven because the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 1 it says heaven is my throne. So the kingdom of heaven is God's throne where God is ruling from. The kingdom of heaven is God's throne where he rules from. Many times you will see in scripture that it says the kingdom of God was like this or the kingdom of God was like that. It simply means that that's where God is ruling from. And similarly, us believers, that's the place that we rule from. It's from the throne of God. He said that the earth, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Hallelujah. So the kingdom of God is his people. So he reigns and he sits on his throne in the hundred realm and he is reigning over his people in the sixty realm. So the kingdom of God is the vineyard, it's many things. When I get into the depths of the teaching I will go more into that. But at this point you should be understanding the difference between the kingdom of God, which is his people, the kingdom of heaven is God's throne room where he reigns from, in Jesus' name. And all the people said? Amen. So if you remember, we'll start with, just repeat after me. I'll say it first and then you can repeat after. There's outer court, holy place, most holy place. Can you repeat that? Outer court, holy place, most holy place. Okay. Then we have Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. These are the three realms of God. We have uh, out here, we have Passover when you go through the gate. You have Pentecost when you go through into the, in, into the, uh, the tabernacle itself, through the door. And you've got the most holy place which is underneath the structure. You go beyond the veil because many preachers talk about going beyond the veil. Amen? Amen. So we as believers, we want to get beyond the veil. We want to get from the death realm. In this realm here is sin, death and condemnation through the door to the truth realm, to the life realm. Um, it is Romans 5, 17 that through one man's disobedience, sin reigned. But through one man's obedience that we reign in life as kings. So the model fits. Hallelujah. I will move on swiftly. Thank you, Jesus. We remember this. Remember this diagram. This is, this is the pattern. The pat yes, thank you. Somebody's listening. Somebody's listening. Uh, the pattern is the pattern is the tabernacle. Amen. And it's the tabernacle of Moses. You'll find it in Exodus chapters 25, verse well, from start of Exodus chapters 25 to Exodus chapters 40. There's 40 chapters. So start reading those 40 chapters. And when you finish reading it, go back and read it again. And when you've read it, go back and read it again. And when you've read it, go back, keep reading it as all of the other scriptures. There's something I'm going to point out, which I did not point out before. Up here I've got judgment. And over here we've got righteousness. It's like a builder. When a builder is building a house, he has to lay a foundation. And to get the structure straight and in line, the scripture says that judgment God lays judgment to the line. So that's the level. So judgment keeps the structure level and righteousness keeps it upright. So when people have back issues, they have a righteousness problem. They have an upright problem. I'll say that again. 
there's righteousness, which is the uprightness, and there's judgment, which is the level. So a, a structure must have a chief cornerstone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And when you're constructing a building, you must lay the first stone. It's called the capstone. It's not the one at the top. The very first stone in a building is the capstone. It's the chief cornerstone because everything is lined up from that one stone. And if that stone is out of true, the whole structure will be out of kilter. It will not be true. So we've got judgment, which is the level, and we've got righteousness, which is the upright part. Amen? Moving on. Moving on swiftly. So we know the tabernacle. I've been waiting four weeks to get to this place. Okay. Okay, this is the pattern. This is a tabernacle. This is a representation of what we just saw. I'm recapping. I always recap so that even if we've got new believers, new learners, they could still follow. This is a representation of what we just saw. The tabernacle itself is just this structure here. That is the tabernacle. I will go back. It's just, just that structure is the tabernacle. This is the outer court. I will let you see that because there's many things to look at. Okay. Just waiting for the slides. This structure is the outer court. This is the tabernacle itself. Do you get that? This structure here in the, in the middle of the outer court, that's the tabernacle itself. We've got the door, the veil is under that structure. That is the tabernacle in itself. Moving on. I'm recapping, I'm trying to go as quickly as I can. Um, next one. Okay, so the tabernacle itself, the structure we just saw, this structure here, that is the tabernacle itself. That's the tabernacle. This is the outer court that we just saw, okay? I said the outer court, we just said a moment ago, I asked you to repeat outer court, holy place, most holy place. We've just repeated that. The other one to remember is Passover, Pentecost, tabernacles i have not got onto the passover pentecost tabernacles yet that will help to complete the picture so that we can move on and begin to understand the revelation of the kingdom of god and also the revelation of jesus christ which is the very last book in the scriptures i also have an excellent understanding of the revelation of jesus christ according to the apostle john Without a knowledge of the tabernacle and without a knowledge of Passover, Pentecost and tabernacles, which is God's timings and his seasons, you will not be able to understand the revelation of Jesus Christ according to John, the 27th and the last book of the Bible. Moving on swiftly. Okay, I've said in the tabernacle of Moses, you have entrances, you have the gate, you have the door, you have the veil. We've gone through that already. In the outer court, that's the 30 round, the 60 round, the 100 round. In the outer court, it's death, it's hell, it's condemnation. And I've said before, two weeks ago, the Holy Ghost, his objective through me is to get people from the death round, the death hell, and the grave realm to the hundredfold realm. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly on the way to the, uh, on the, way to the, to the life realm, which is over here. He says, it's the way over here. It's the truth, it's the life. On the way to the truth or the life realm, to the life realm, you have to pass through the, the truth realm. And the truth realm is, because you will know the truth, the truth will make you free from death, hell, and condemnation, sin, hell, and the grave, you get the truth here, so you move out of this realm to get to the life realm beyond the veil. Moving on quickly. 
So those were the those were the ancientcies. Those were the ancient. These were the ancientcies to the tabernacle of Moses. There is a mine of information you can spend the next twenty years just studying just those fifteen chapters. Fifteen, twenty years on those chapters. Moving on. So as I say, we've got the kingdoms of the world. The kingdom of God is his people and the kingdom of heaven is where God rules from. That's his throne. And that's where you've got the, you've got the, Ark, of the, the Ark of the Covenant and you've got the mercy seat with the two cherubim on top. I've also said that the kingdom of heaven, it's divine. But I'll get into all of those teachings. Moving on. Okay, this is where I stopped last week. It is crucial that we now understand that within the tabernacle itself, there's furniture, there's vessels, etc., etc. So this next slide, it highlights the location and the positionings of all of the furniture of the tabernacle. So in the outer court, there's a brazen altar. In the outer court, there's also a brazen laver. In the holy place, there's two pieces of furniture which is the table of showbread. Jesus says, I'm the bread of light. Um, he, says, he also says over here, I'm the light of the world, okay? And over here, there's a, a golden altar of incense with a golden censer. You put living hot coals in the golden censer to pray. When you're praying to God, you put coals in, in, into the golden censer and the hot coals, uh, the high priest, will then put incense on the golden censer and the smoke rises up to God because our, our prayers is like incense going up to God. Hallelujah. So we've got a golden altar of incense. The golden censer goes on top of that. We have an Ark of the Covenant and we have a mercy seat. Moving on. So I said this in the... In the pattern of the tabernacle it also says is the pattern of all of the vessels of all of the instruments so these are the vessels these are the instruments so in the tabernacle technically there are seven pieces there are seven pieces seven pieces of furniture seven instruments in the tabernacle brazen laver brazen altar brazen laver table of showbread golden candlestick we have a golden altar of incense, a mercy seat, and an Ark of the Covenant. Now, it, it is so important to understand the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the vessels, of the furniture, etc. This commit to memory, because I'm going to move on. So I'll say it again. So in the outer court, the brazen labor, brazen altar, this is number five and six, three and four, one, two and seven. And the reason those numbers are there is because that is the order of the revelation of the furniture that God gave to Moses. So the first piece of furniture that was made in the tabernacle was the Ark of the Covenant. You'll find that in Exodus chapters 25 and verse 10. That's the very first piece of furniture that was made. The second piece of furniture that was made was the mercy seat. That's number two. The third, the seventh piece of furniture is the golden altar of incense that's the order so the the third piece of furniture in the tabernacle is the table of showbread and the fourth piece is the golden candlestick the fifth piece of furniture is the brazen altar and the sixth piece of furniture is the brazen laver i'm going to ask a question how many wounds did jesus have in his body how many wounds, how many piercings did he have in his body? There were three nails, there were three nails. He was crucified with three nails. He was scourged with a whip and he had a crown of thorns on his head. Okay. And he, he had two nails in his hand. Okay. Those represent every place Jesus shed blood in his body. He shed blood on his two feet. He shed blood in his two hands. And he shed blood in, on his back. Number one represents his back. He was scourged on his back. Number two is the thorn, is the crown of thorns. And number seven is the spear in his side. Moving on. This is why it's so important. I was saying to my wife, 
Um, I know there were seven, Jesus was pierced seven times. He shed blood from seven places in his body. And I said to my wife, I know there's seven, but what's, what's the seventh? I knew about his feet, I know about his hands, I know about his head, and I knew um, the one that I couldn't remember was his back. Right, I'll say this once more. This is crucial. This is crucial to the understanding of the scripture and all the revelations from Genesis back to uh, Revelation and from the book of Revelation to Genesis. I'll la just labor here. Let me move on quickly because of time. There's seven places where Jesus shed his blood and the tabernacle, this represents the places, two feet, two hands, his back and his head and his side. He was pierced in his side with a spear. So there's two nails, there's, there's one nail here going through his feet like that, there's one nail through his feet, two nails in his hands, his pet crown of thorns, his back, and this is his side with a spear. Now this information for me, I understand it because I read everything in the scriptures, I read every jot, every tittle, every begat and every begot I read, I pronounce every name, I look at every name, moving on. Now this is what I wanted to get to. Here it is. This is Jesus Christ crucified. Do you see that? Jesus Christ crucified. His left foot, a nail, went through his left foot. His, so his left foot was on top of his right foot. One nail. So there's one nail. This is what I've got. The left foot is on top of his right foot. One nail. His two hands, there's two nails. Those, so that's nail three. Nail four. Nail one is here. Nail three is here. Nail four is also here. Do you follow that, Pastor? Yeah. This is Jesus Christ crucified. We're looking at a picture of the tabernacle. So unless you've got a revelation of the tabernacle, you won't understand what I'm talking about. The furniture represents every place he shed his blood. There were three nails. Three nails. His back. His back. Is one place he shed his blood. The spear was in his side, that's number seven. His head is number two. The crown of thorns and the two hands. One more slide and then I'll, I'll pick up from next week. It is so important. Without the tabernacle, this does not make sense. Each piece of furniture represents every place where Jesus shed blood. Okay? It says here, these, I've got all the scriptures. There's one book that outlines all of it, and it's John's Gospel. So I want you to remember that. Let's go back. <clears throat> Let's go back. Sorry, sorry. Can you go? Okay. Can you go back? Back again. Yeah, go back again. No. Further? Or the tabernacle? Yeah, or the on the cross, you want me to go back to the cross? Yeah. Okay, no, yeah, we can do that. That's the cross. Yeah, okay. For your, for your, uh, this one, the operation of this cross. Yes. What are the, uh, do you use the symbolism of the color to represent something, or you just do it to cover, do it over there? Yeah, no, I just use colors so that we can see clearly. The colors at this point don't really matter. Oh, okay. I just do it for clarity for the audience that you can see. So uh, the, crown, the, the, the cross, I'll put it in red. I could put it in green, it could be blue, it could be anything. But when I get to significance of colors, blue, purple, scarlet, etc., brass, silver, bronze, I will get to that. But this is purely for illustration so that you can see the numbers. I want you to see the numbers clearly. Five, six, uh, one, see, one is, his, one is his back, two is the crown of thorns three or four is hands, there's two nails here, there's one nail here, and these, those are the numbers. It is critical to understand this. I've never seen, read it in a book. I've read commentaries, I've read books, I've read Bibles, not blowing my own trumpet. It's the Holy Ghost that taught me this. No man taught me none of this. Amen? And lastly, I will come back to this. I'll, st I'll stick here. This is what the scripture says. Psalms 22 verses 16 says, They pierced my hands and my feet. Zechariah 12 and verse 10 says the same, same thing. They pierced my hands and my feet. Here's his feet that were pierced, his hands that were pierced, and also his back and his head, 
and his side. His side, it was a thaw, it was a spear. A spear went into his side, crown of thorns on his crown of thorns on his head. I've actually got it up there, crown of thorns, and his back was scourged, he was whipped. He was scourged, he was whipped. Hallelujah. So then the soldiers when they had crucified Jesus. This is what I'm seeing here. This is, his, this is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The soldiers plaited a, a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, beat him in his back. Um, but one of the soldiers, as it said, with a spear pierced his side, da da da, da da da. I will stop there. There is much. Now that we've got an understanding of this, that it lines up with the tabernacle and the pattern and so on and so forth, I can begin to launch into the deep. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll leave that up. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, amen. 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 Uh, I want 